Michigan beat Penn State 24 to 15 yesterday. I was on the sidelines for this one. Surprisingly nice weather. I came equipped with layers, and I didn't really need them. But I did roll the dice in this game. I think famously last week, I was one of the only ones out there who picked Penn State. So I rolled those dice, and the dice fell off the table. So I figured, why bury the lead? Colin, let's go full Sarah McLaughlin special here. I have in my hand a copy of the play sheet for Michigan. Michigan chose to end this game with the following play selection. <clears throat> Allow me to share. Run, 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 run. Uh, this is where it gets really interesting. Run, 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 pass interference. Run, 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 end of game. That is like looking at a seal and clubbing it and then clubbing it some more and some more. And eventually you realize <laughs> the seal can't do anything. Look at how defenseless it is. Now, it's not exactly a PETA friendly metaphor, but that's what I witnessed yesterday. So it wasn't a blowout in classical terms on the scoreboard. I had a very weird feeling standing on the field watching this because normally if you witness a single digit margin, which this was for a vast majority of the game, you rarely look at it and say, dude, that other team didn't have much of a chance. But yet I asked producer Jesse very long in the face today when I walked in the building, I said, Jesse, let's just say we play this thing nine more times. How many of these games do you think Penn State wins? I, I got to be real with you guys. Just the feel that the game had, I don't think they would have won one. And I never say that. I never say that because I know how the margins are so thin in this sport. I know what Drew Aller not turning that ball over instead of turning it over. Like, I get that. But what I felt was Michigan had it in them to do whatever they needed to do. McCarthy threw the ball eight times yesterday. It's not because he couldn't. It's because they didn't need to. They probably had so much in the tank. In fact, I can guarantee you they had so much in the tank. Because I was outside the locker room. I walked with them off the field. I was outside the locker room after the game. Uh, they could have gone full Ernie Banks style. They could have said, you want to play two? Okay, let's just play two. It was, a, it was a very juiced team. And I don't think that's much of a surprise to you. But, man, Michigan, they got stunned just slightly to start the game. And then it didn't really matter. At such a veteran-laden team, they couldn't do stuff they wanted to do the first couple of drives. They adjusted. You could feel it. You could feel it start to shift on the field. You could see it on the broadcast. And then they rip a couple of long runs. They didn't run it for 400. They didn't need to. They ran it for over 200, though. They were the physically superior team. I'm telling you, a nine-point win felt so much larger than that. I, I'm pretty sure... They had it in them to do whatever they needed to do. Had, had Penn State answered, I think there would have been counter answers on the Michigan side. I thought back watching this game to being down in Miami a couple of years ago when this team played Georgia in a semifinal. And after the game, I remember I came back on the show and I told you guys, you know, Georgia won this thing in a route. It wasn't competitive. But I do remember standing on the field and it was right, I remember it was right before New Year's, right before the stroke of midnight. And McCarthy and Blake Corum and some other of their young kids are standing there. And they're, they're just off. They're not seeking attention. They're like off near the tunnel. I happen to be standing over there. So I saw them and they're watching the Georgia celebration. And I remember thinking to myself, those dudes are going to get a couple of more cracks at this. Because I'm looking at true freshmen. And then they got another shot last year. Didn't go their way last year. But it kind of led up to this moment. You couldn't have known that was coming. You, when these kids are true freshmen getting beat by Georgia and they're standing there swallowing a bitter pill like that and soaking it in, you could never know that they're kind of being molded for two years down the road, their head coach is going to be suspended, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because what Jim Harbaugh has there is now a player-led team. That You, you want to know what the best test of culture is? Take your hands off the wheel. Harbaugh was forced to take his hands off the wheel. The car didn't veer a bit. I mean, there are coaches out there terrified to even turn their back on their team. Most of them because they're younger teams or they don't have a solid culture. Harbaugh get, gets forcibly removed from his team. Hands are off the wheel. That thing's on autopilot, but in the best of ways. Uh, they were as razor focused as I've ever seen a team. They went in there and handled business and then afterwards could have been a lot more demonstrative than they were, Sharon Moore not, notwithstanding, obviously, on the postgame. 
uh, cut an Attitude Era promo on Fox, I heard. I was standing there. I didn't know that some of that got out on live TV. But it's just all the good teams, the ones that are there in the end, they normally have that in common. They are player-led. You talk to coaches on those teams, and they'll tell you, you know, all we kind of had to be was like the bumpers. If you've ever been bumper bowling, I myself would never. But if you've ever witnessed bumper bowling, the bumpers are just there to you know, kind of guide the ball a little bit. It, it, it's not the ball itself. The ball itself is taking care of business. The players are taking care of business. Coaches are just there. Uh, here, here's the practice schedule for this week. Uh, let, let's make sure attention to detail is on this drill the way it needs to be. The players are running the team. The players run the team at Michigan. The players on Saban's best teams have run the team at Alabama. Ditto at Georgia. Ditto at Ohio State. Clemson's best teams were like that. That's what Harbaugh's got now. That's why it didn't matter that he wasn't on the sideline yesterday. I'd be careful worshiping the box score on this game, too. Be careful because you're going to look at it. If you didn't know any better and you hadn't watched Michigan this year, you'd look at it and you'd say, this looks like a service academy box score. They threw the ball eight times. McCarthy was seven for eight. If you don't know any better, you may think to yourself, that's Michigan's brand. That's their style of play. They're 80% to the run. Well, of course they're not. They did that yesterday because they knew Penn State couldn't answer, because Penn State couldn't score. They couldn't move the ball. So there's no reason to insert risk or variance by putting the ball in the air when you don't have to. But if they do have to down the road, I think they can. I think McCarthy's capable of that. I think Roman Wilson and those guys, they're fully capable of that. Maybe not going for 350 or 400 through the air, but be very careful. There will be false conclusions drawn off this. And mark my words, down the road, a couple of weeks, you'll be watching that game set up in Ann Arbor. Ohio State's coming to town, and folks will they'll start saying, hey, we just got to shut them down on the ground. If we can force McCarthy to throw the ball on us, I like our chances. Remember, he didn't even throw the ball 10 times, or maybe they didn't trust him to throw the ball 10 times. They trust that dude to run that entire offense. They, they trust him implicitly.